Welcome. Welcome to the second week of That Word Chat. And this week we have uh, Steve Kleinedler and Corey Stamper as our guests. Our producer, um, have their new producer week. We've hired a producer this week as well as spending tons of money on the, on the theme song. Um, and our producer is going to mute you with a vengeance if, uh, if anybody starts some um, coughing or sneezing or a dog wanders by. Uh, feel free to chat in the in the window though, um, and if you really need to say something, um, I don't know what uh, you know. You can unmute and speak up, but really, it works a lot better if everybody's quiet except for the people talking. Uh, so, Steve Kleinedler, uh, former executive editor for the American Heritage Dictionary, uh, Webster's and Webster's New World Dictionary. Because why just be executive editor for one dictionary if you can be executive editor? Um, he is. Uh, he joined Houghton Mifflin after um, studying linguistics at the University of Chicago. He was there for years and years and years and um, left there a couple of years ago when they decided they'd take a pause from the whole dictionary game. Um, hmm. Corey Stamper, our other guest, uh, did, she did medieval studies at Smith College and she went to work for Merriam-Webster out of college, I think. You know, they'll correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, she worked on the Collegiate Dictionary, the Advanced Learners Dictionary, and she also did some of the videos you can find on the MW website. Um, she did the famous discussion of the plural of octopus. Um, and they both written a couple of books, and maybe we'll talk about that. And so Steve and Corey, Corey, uh, unmute yourself and um, say hi. Hey. Hello. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Mark. I should point out, um, although I was the executive editor for the American Heritage Dictionary, I was the managing editor for the Webster's New World Dictionary. And even though that the uh, American Heritage is no longer um, in operation, Webster's New World still is. Um, you have an editorial staff working with the uh, Associated Press on that. Right, um, but so, I am no longer there. Right, and I know and, and you say you were. You, somebody told me you were, it's, it was still being updated. Um, I don't know how recently is it still being? Is Webster's New World still being updated for the? Yes, uh, Webster's New World is still being updated. Um, the staff includes one of the lexicographers who has been uh, working on that dictionary for over thirty years, and. Uh, so yes, okay, yeah. it, it is still in operation. Right, and of course you can you can buy the physical copy or you can subscribe. The only way to get the electronic version is subscribe to the Style Stylebook as an add-on. Um, and is what about AH Dictionary? I, I know I'm asking questions about somebody you used to work for, but is AH Dictionary still, still yes AH Dictionary dot com still exists? Yeah, not being updated as far as you know. It is uh, not being updated. No, it is. Uh, it is now a uh, uh, a version of how it ended up being as of uh, last November. Yeah. Okay. Still a very valuable resource. You know that etymological oh, yeah. information is very rich. Um, you aren't going to find the newest words there, but there are you know hundreds of thousands of others that you will. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a little. It's kind of an underused gem. I, I don't know how Thank used you. it was, but. You know, we think of the online dictionaries. Marion Webster does a fantastic job and does a lot of social media and um, keeps people informed. Um, each dictionary is that simple, like search thing, and but it's the full dictionary. It's a great resource. Thank you. So, um, so how's uh, how's the quarantining going? Working from home now? Yeah. Um... I am, I, well, I spent the last seven and a half years at the American Heritage Dictionary also working out of a home office. Oh. So it's, this is, uh, I, I now work at a, as a technical editor and for the last five weeks I've been at home. And so I'm, I'm, I'm used to it. So Corey, how about you? Give me a second. I'm trying to fix my audio. Is it sounds better? great now, so okay. much better. Yes, Good. Yes. Give me two seconds. There we go. All right. Sorry. I'm fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Quarantine's fine. Uh, you, you work from home a lot. 
before. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been working remotely for 13 years now. Oh. So it's been plenty. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's nothing new to, to quarantine life. The only change is that I'm not working at Merriam Webster now. I'm working for a different company. So, right. but you know, and you're, it's all good. And you're writing a book. I'm writing, yeah, I'm supposed to be writing two books. I'm in the middle of editing one book and so, <laughs> editing <laughs> one book. I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of editing because we got this pandemic on. Uh, yeah. And then I'm supposed to be doing research for a, th a third book, which I can't do because we've got this pandemic on. Can you, can you? Can you tell us the topics of these books or are they sort of under wraps until the big release? No, I can tell you the topics. Um, the topic of the book I'm supposed to be editing right now is about defining color. And it's specifically about this period of time in the early 20th century when uh, dictionaries decided to go from being just kind of whatever to being highly scientific and so they hired a bunch of scientists to write definitions for a bunch of things including color um, and that caused huge amounts of problems in the color world so i'm writing about that and then the third book is uh is gonna take a long time to research and write it's about the uh it's called mother tongue the uh hidden story of how women made the english language and so it's going to be a chronological survey of how women have influenced English, the grammar of English, language acquisition, things like that. That's as far as I've gotten on that one. <laughs> I got as far as writing a book proposal and coming up with a list of things I have to research. That's it. Uh -huh. And I think a lot of you, speaking of color, a lot of people tuned in just to see what your hair is like now. It's, it's actually purple, but it's hard to see. It's like yeah. a dark purple. Okay. Sorry, I don't have like a flashlight on it, but yeah. how about you, Steve? Oh, sorry. No, no. Uh, I no cut my hair on uh, Sunday. Nice. It was getting a little shaggy, so <laughs> I won't be showing you the back of my head. <laughs> so That's you fair. guys, I don't know if everybody knows this, but you were, so you were at two, uh, two of the major dictionaries, there aren't that many dictionaries. Um, but you guys were at two of the major American dictionaries and but you knew each other and you were like we I, I, Corey you told me you were neighbors were you actually physically neighbors or were you just like same neighbor we were pretty about close yeah five miles apart if that other side yeah. of the river yeah I mean for he was my he was the closest co-worker I had right all my other co-workers were in New York or Boston so yeah. or Springfield Springfield so um, when we when we worked on our podcast, I would go over to her house, and mm -hmm. uh, her husband, who's a sound engineer, would get us all hooked up, and away we would go. <laughs> you know, I always assumed listening to this podcast that you were separate. I have no idea why I didn't assume you would just go over to her house, but listening to it, I just assumed you were remote while you were working. Nope. But, yeah. No, so, it was easier. I <laughs> I have. Uh, I have hearing problems, and so it's a lot easier for me to be able to see somebody. And mm -hmm. so, so anytime that when we decided to do it, it was like, oh, just come over to the house. It's going to yeah. be easier. Also, it was easier to play off each other. I mean, when you listen yeah. to those podcasts, you hear us laughing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Just the interaction was, we would set it up so that we were like looking directly at each other. So right. it was, uh, it, it, you know, mm -hmm. very... Um, What's the word I'm looking for, Corey? I don't know. Uh, improv -y. Yes, no, and sure. I don't know. You're you're the improv. You're the improv yeah. specialist. We we played off each other really well. Yeah. 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 Um, and and speaking of improv, you, you're Steve. You're doing improv. I know you did one a little yesterday. Last day. Oh uh, yeah. Um, well, that's why I cut my hair actually. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, I the one thing about the pandemic is you don't have to be in a particular place anymore. So I've been doing some shows with um, former acting partners who are now across the country. Uh, last Sunday and this coming Sunday, uh, working with one of my acting partners out of L.A. 
um, for a show that's uh, hosted by uh, Philly Improv Theater, where we play a bunch of, where we play two Cold War spies. Oh. Uh, and it, it went really well. And it, it's well suited to this medium too. So it, it, it worked. Yeah. So, so, I, so the question I was getting at is you guys were, you knew each other, you were, um, you would exchange messages back and forth by text or whatever while you were working, you know, um, I don't know if this was approved, went through channels, but um, what was, what was that like sending, uh, you know, trade secrets back and forth? Well, <laughs> it's not that we were exchanging, we were more gossiping than exchanging trade secrets, but we would have an open um, Google Hangout chat window open and we'd be, uh, uh, you know, I, I think there's a there's a tweet from one of us from the last three or four years, which just us in all capital letters going like "gah." Back and forth. <laughs> yes, I I what I think what we did a lot of was like oh, because I handled so much of the communications like co customer correspondence at Merriam-Webster that sometimes they'd be like, "Are you guys getting letters about your definition of you know?" And it was usually something so, so tremendously innocuous. Like, are you getting definitions? Are you getting letters about your definition for bald? Or are you getting letters for your definition about tooth? Or has the floor guy written you, the guy who wants the word floor removed from the dictionary? Floor? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then there were other, there, there were certain people who would contact every dictionary. Um, in, in, kind of a problematic way. Um, in fact, one person in particular I know has been banned from communicating <laughs> with a dictionary. And, you know, we'd be like, oh, so-and-so wrote me, be on the lookout, warn your people. Um, right. But that wasn't just Corey, you know, I would, I would I'd occasionally communicate with Catherine uh, Martin mm -hmm. over at the OED or so. And it's like, oh, you know, so-and-so is gearing up about this topic, you know, be on the lookout. Right. Yeah. So, but we didn't, I mean, it's funny because there's, there's not really... <sighs> The trade secret parts of dictionary writing are so tremendously boring that it, there's just no sense in like, why would I possibly ever want to have a conversation with Steve about sales tactics? Like, I don't, I don't want to have a no. conversation about sales tactics. Nobody, we, because we both know nobody buys dictionaries anyway. So why don't we instead talk about uh, the guy who wants us all to remove floor from the dictionary? That's better. Uh, let, let's stay on that a little bit. Did you say, you used to say floor, F-L-O-O-R. F-L-O-O-R, yeah. And why? Everyone wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> floor guy was a guy who repeatedly contacted Merriam-Webster. And Steve, I don't know if he ever contacted you or if you ever saw any of his emails, if he did. I, I have to admit, I, I, I am not, he must have been targeting mostly Merriam-Webster because this, this one is actually new to me as well. Okay, so he, he wrote repeatedly to the customer service email address saying that floor needs to be removed from the dictionary because it is just a ceiling that you walk on. <laughs> and, I would and I would have to explain multiple times <laughs> Okay, this is what a dictionary does. This is what the word floor does. Yes, you may think it is a ceiling you walk on, but it, we're not gonna take it out of the dictionary. And I would respond to him. And then six months later, he would write back to the general address, hoping for a different person's response. Mm -hmm. I think he was just hoping that he'd hit enough people that someone would say, oh yeah, okay, that's fine. So he would just keep, he'd keep going and all of the email came through me and I'm like, I'm not gonna pass this off to some poor editor who has like actual work to do. I'm not, so floor guy, I think floor guy wrote me 13 or 14 times and it was always by like the third time when he was like, why don't we have, don't you have anybody else there I can talk to? <laughs> your I manager, talked to, I wanna talk to your manager. Yeah, basically. And so I did say, uh, I talked to my, managing editor and I was like do you want to talk to floor guy and he's like absolutely not so I talked to floor guy that's floor guy these yeah. people can take up a lot of time sure. <laughs> yeah sure yeah I mean I used to work in a newspaper and I take some phone some interesting phone calls about people's theories about whatever and so I I can I can understand the 
the issue of, of where you're coming from. Yes. There. Yes. Um, so uh, the we mentioned the podcast, which you unfortunately stopped doing. I, I listened to them all and loved them. Um, Thank you. There yeah. any any chance, any plans to like one day? Well, the fact that we now live, the fact that we now live, you know, 300 miles apart makes it uh, a little difficult. Also, yeah. neither of us work for the company that we did when we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. So right. there's that as well. Yeah. Um, it would just be us um, shooting the breeze about <laughs> former glory days. And right. remember and that, that time we did yeah. that cool thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that seems sad. Yeah. It seems a sad thing. I mean, the other, one of the other big reasons was the podcast took really it just took a lot of time to edit it down and yeah. set everything up and and you know so my husband's the engineer and you know he's a great guy but at a certain point it was kind of like i can't keep asking him to devote you know however many hours billable hours to this a week or a month right. and and i'm lazy i didn't want to start a Patreon. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. you know, it, a, a lot of my friends, you know, just grab a. A lot of my friends just grab a random microphone and put up onto a podcast, and not worrying about how it sounds. But you know, Josh takes pride in his work, so it's like it. It wasn't something that could be just you know uh, easily. You know, done. It was there was a lot right. of thought and effort that mm -hmm. went into it, and you know, we got a lot of. Um, you know, by people in the industry, you know, we got a lot of compliments on the, like the sound quality and stuff. It was, it was yeah. a very well-produced podcast. So yeah. oh, I was yeah. very happy to have been a part of that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe someday. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> we should give his title as Intrepid Engineer Josh. Intrepid Engineer Josh. Yeah. Yes. Who on Twitter also appears as Hair Maestro on my feed. Um, but but rarely, because he's like, oh, why are you putting me on Twitter? It's just fair. So the, really the, the podcast yeah. is Fiat Lex, and it's still, I still, so assume it's still out there and will be until the end of time or until we're the no heat longer death of the universe. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> so people can find it. So you still watch, you still listen to the first season. Um, you know, Jesse Scheidlauer on there as a guest, which is fun, mm -hmm. a couple of episodes. So what yeah. What did you, what were you planning, like, the second season? You must have had some ideas, oh, we can talk about this, talk about that. Because there's only so much, you know, when you think right. about it, there's only so much you can talk about. One thing, we just, yeah. one thing we discussed is we, we would have had uh, many more guests. We were talking about people, um, you know, mm -hmm. who would be near enough to New Jersey to easily you know, make a trip out. Uh, we talked about having Jane Solomon on. Um, there were a couple other names. So I think it would have become more of us interviewing our friends. Right. <laughs> I, I, don't, yeah. I don't see that format really working, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's problematic. Yeah. So, um, so, so I, I was talking about trade secrets. So it was totally a joke. If anybody misunderstood that, it was uh, serious complaint. It was not. It was all humor. Um, but when I look at dictionaries, when I, I I tend to be the kind of person who will look at a definition and then say, well, let's see what you know Oxford says about that. And so I'll look at different mm -hmm. dictionaries to get for the same definition. And sometimes they're awfully similar. Now maybe oh, yeah. the you know some words you can only define so many ways. But how much of that is um, homage, as my son, the uh, composer, will say that composers, when it sounds like they're taking from another composer, what they're really doing is paying homage to that composer. So mm -hmm. how I, think much we this in, I think we covered this in one of the podcasts, and uh, I think Corey has actually written about this topic extensively. Yeah, it's mostly, so, uh, Every lexicographer I know, we, because um, we live in the modern age of publishing, which means that each of the companies want very much to have all of their own content to be copyrighted and not copied. So 
I, I mean, at Merriam-Webster, we don't look at other dictionaries when we're defining because it's too easy to glom onto someone else's language. Um, but honestly, you know, we're all trained by like the same five people when you come, I mean, there's, there's only three degrees of separation in lexicography. And so if you're all trained by the same people, you all have the same sensibility. And there are, there are just certain ways of, you know, there's just, there's only so many ways that you can define devoted, or there's only so many ways you can define general or mm -hmm. but we do i mean what's funny is i think if you know the field and you know the industry then you can tell sort of where a person has like who they've worked for as they've gone through their career based on the mm -hmm. formulaic definitions so it's like oh you're a, you're an other pertaining to person well <laughs> well i'm an other relating, relating to, person. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, oh wow. you're a you're a factor state we're a state or condition you know it's that sort of yeah. So, wow. so in that way, if you're a close reader of dictionaries, you get used to each of their styles. Yeah. But, but and yeah, I mean, we we don't we don't copy from each other because some companies are highly litigious and they will go after you if they think that you've copied something of theirs. So, right. Uh, and to tie into something that you said right before that, uh, Mark, uh, you know, it, you know, when I started in the well, I can say the 80s because my first contract was in December of 1989. But realistically, back in the 90s, you know, there were maybe 200 to 300 working lexicographers. That number is far fewer now. Um, but most of us knew each other, or at least of each other. And, you know, the first Dictionary Society of North America conference I went to in 1999, there were probably 150 people there. So at least half of the working lexicographers at the time were there. So there, I mean, when it comes to trade secrets, it, there really weren't any because we were all colleagues. And, uh, you know, a lot of that business stuff was left to the, the, the people in marketing and sales and, and, you know, the business infrastructure above us. So it's, you know, we were, we were more like the worker bees or the carpenters putting stuff together. So, you know, no one really talked about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you would, you'd have, com we still would have conversations about, uh, you know, if there were, if there was language in prominence in the news and it was like, oh, have you guys entered this? Have you guys entered that? Where's, where are you at with that? You'd have, con you'd have general conversations about that, but even then it wasn't like you run back to the publisher and go, oh, dictionary.com well, is going to enter that, or oh, American Heritage is entering that. We got to get on it. It's just, yeah. So a few years ago, um, uh, uh, several of us were over at Jesse Scheidler's house watching um, The Great Passage, uh, which is a Japanese movie about a bunch of people making a dictionary. Um, it's actually a really great movie. It's based on a manga. I exhort all of you to check it out. It, it, it's whoever worked on this, like really got it. But anyhow, there were, there were about five or six of us there from different companies. And um, Jesse went out to the kitchen to make up some more cocktails uh, for us. And he came back with the cocktails. And uh, he's like, oh, where are we at? And I said, oh, they just met Q. And I, you know, and then all of, we had to pause because we all stopped to talk about whether or not we had ha we had a verb form of meet cute, what the past <laughs> tense was, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, there were a bunch of us from different companies there. Talk that's the type of talks we'd have. It's like, oh yeah. yeah, there's this thing, that thing, that thing. But like, you know, if you want sales figures, everyone has access to the same book scan figures as everyone else. So there's really no point in talking to each other about that, so. You know, when you mentioned that you're all at Jesse Scheidlauer's watching a movie together, which is just a great, you know, thing to think about. My first, the first question that I thought I should ask and I just immediately dismissed is, what kind of cocktails did you serve? Oh, they were amazing. <laughs> um, he I, is a, he's a bartender. Like he owns a really lovely um, and super fancy bar. Uh, in, in Brooklyn, in uh, Brooklyn? The, it's yeah, it's the it's that one where it only seats two people. Yeah. So yeah. it's right. two people and the bartender, and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So he knows how to make drinks. He makes a lot of his own. He makes a lot of his own, um, I guess, bitters and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I and uh, his uh, drinks are really good. 
Yeah, I, I'm just pulling Jesse off the That's bookshelf it. there. Is <laughs> that what he looks like? Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Pretty close. Yeah, and he did he famously he did the the F word, which is yes, he did. uh looking at he he was with uh, OED and um looked at definitions for the F word um in the, the many, many definitions in the OED. And while I'm pulling books off the shelf, uh let's see, I got a got a fine nuzzler. Um oh my book book? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I I should have done um, this uh, in advance because I, there we go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is language changing? And, and the answer is yes. Is English changing? Excuse me. Yeah. That's a, 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 it's a textbook, like a Linguistics 101 textbook. If you're interested in semantics or phonology or syntax, but really don't know anything about it, it's, um, it's it's written uh, in a way that should be very accessible to, um, uh, to to people who don't really have a background in linguistics. So, um, mm -hmm. colleagues I know who teach like a basic linguistics 101 for it uh, is uh, it, it, if you're interested in linguistics and want to know more about it, it's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it's very it's succinct. I mean, every you know every section is just really a a short, very to the point overview. There's not a lot of extra detail there you get you get a lot of information in a small thing and then of course Corey's book is I, it, it looks to me like it's like washed out from the light and don't have a <laughs> situation but there we go yeah there we go We're, for contrast backwards? no that's right that's, no? that's right okay. side all right you got it i'm looking at the screen this backwards all right <laughs> <laughs> word by word by Corey Smith. yeah so what that was um uh, it, that that book is it um what, what's the life cycle of a book word by word is it still um a raging success or is it sort of died off or... <laughs> i mean it's still in print which for a language <laughs> book is a raging success um right. it's yeah i it, it's people still occasionally buy it i've actually <laughs> had a lot of people during quarantine go okay i'm finally going to read your book which is okay. i'm grateful for um, thank you for your dollar fifty of of royalty support. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I I think so. The my um, guess is the hardcover's out of print, but the paperback is still to be had. Oh, okay, I don't think I ever got this one signed. So you'll have to. Did come I back. ever sign that? Well, you'll have to come back and. I was gonna say I was that. I did a well, signing across the street from your house. How did we yeah. not <laughs> do that? It's true. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Steve. Steve signed it, but uh, I mean, his book. Just your... a better person than yeah. I am. Well, That's you know, I probably asked him. I probably, <laughs> I was awestruck by you and didn't ask you. So. Oh please. Um. So so I so we we thought we'd play a little game, um, on the on that word chat today, and um, the a little bit. A little bit to the question about homage and how dictionaries are similar. We thought it might be fun to have you both define a word. Now I know this isn't, you don't just get a word and say, all right, and define it. You right. look at all the uses of it, think about it until your brain is, boom, is starting to melt. But we're going to put you on the spot and ask you both to define a word. And one way we can do this is, Corey, if you take your headphones off, we can ask Steve for a definition. And then we can ask you for a okay. definition and see how close there. And we'll, this will take a second because I want right. to I wanna get the words from the audience. So um, so audience, are, if you have so a So we word, should we not look at the chat window? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then again, close the chat. Yeah, close the chat. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Actually, Steve, if you could put your fingers in your ears. Me? Uh, <laughs> ours, I thought Heather, our, our producer, our marvelous producer, Heather, could say the word. Well, no, you, you can hear. I, I've closed the chat window. All yeah, right. Okay. I'm, I am taking my headphones out. So if anyone needs me, someone needs to make some big, like. All right. Thing. We'll, All we'll right. call you back when, when it's time. All right. All right, so we want a word, and it has, and it can't, you know, but not something to stump them, but just something you think you might might be interesting to get a definition of. 
Um, <laughs> Heather, do you see any, uh, any good possible words out there? We have earlobe and shamble as potentials. Ooh. All right. Litter. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll, let me start with shamble. I'll go with the verb. Uh, All right. All right. So for shamble, uh, you're, you're, you're the, it, it's, it's a movement word. So, you know, you'd start off with something like to move and then you'd break it down into what makes moving by shambling different than moving by ambling or anything else. So I would probably say something uh, to move aimlessly or lackadaisically often by, oh God, some to move, to shamble along, to move, to move aimlessly or lackadaisically. Let's start with that. That's just off the top okay. of my head. Uh, earlobe um, noun. Well, um, let's, let's, let's get let's oh, bring come, Barry back. We'll do we'll do shamble first, and then. Okay, we we have a word. I don't know if anybody wrote down Steve's definition, but uh, we have a we word. We remember it. Yeah, <laughs> the word the word is uh, shamble. Verb. Shamble verb, mm -hmm. not shambles noun. Correct. Okay. Shamble verb. Oh, let me think here. I'm trying to come up with like a complete single statement definition in my head while I do this. Uh, I talked it through bit by bit. Oh, is that what I, you I were did? Doing like that? thought. I was, was I doing this? <laughs> I yes, thought, I was. Yeah, you were doing this. I was, I was like, thought oh. processing. Okay. Yeah. However you All want, right. you can write it down too. Yeah. Oh, okay, I might I might have to write mine down, but oh, I will but then talk. Look at your thought process. Well, no, you know I can't. You know I run at them out, so it's fine. Okay, <laughs> shamble, uh, shamble is a verb. Shamble is a verb of movement, so uh, it's it's movement forward. So I'm going to say to move forward in a. Let's see, when you shamble, you're sort of. See, I'm very good at coming up with, with synonyms, right? So you sort of are stuttering forward. Okay, so so to move forward in a halting or stumbling way. So then I guess that would be to stumble forward or to move. Oh, no, 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 not stumbling, <laughs> shuffling, because you, sh yeah, okay, to, to stumble or shuffle forward, that's what I'm going to say, to stumble or shuffle forward. Well, we started out the same way, I said the exact <laughs> same thing about movement, I guess they don't know what shamble means, because I, guess I didn't I have any either. citations in front of me, I said to move um, aimlessly or lackadaisically, um, oh, yeah, it might be that. But it might be what you said. I mean, again, you're asking us to define something without looking at citations. <laughs> I don't use shamble as a verb in my life. So Come on. I don't, it could be shuffling. It could, it, it could I, be aimlessness. Wander. Yeah. It could what be is both. I'm going to pull out Corey's dictionary first here. And we'll look up shamble. Uh, shamble, shamble to walk in an awkward, unsteady way without lifting your feet very high off the ground. Huh. Oh, so or that must shuffle. be from the learner's dictionary. Yeah. That's very wordy. Yeah. It, um, yeah. Anyhow, this is not how we go about defining words, mind you. <laughs> um, if, if lexicographers use their intuition, um, it would be really uh, be bad. It'd so bad. It'd yeah. be so bad. All right, American Heritage, Steve's Dictionary, and all these pictures. So many pictures. So many pretty pictures. Shamble, to walk in an awkward, lazy, or unsteady manner, shuffling the feet. Ooh. So they both there we go. shuffling the feet. Interesting. All right, all right. Uh, should, we do another, should we do another word? Sure. <laughs> right. uh, Corey, you go first this time, Corey. I'll take yeah. out my headphones. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, and Heather, do you, do you have like pen and paper to write down the answers? I will for the next batch. Yeah. And then, we'll, <laughs> then we can like compare them side by side. You can tell us what they say. This is good. Okay. All right. So we also had glint come up. I suggested bamboozle. 
Uh, we have litter. L-I-T-T-E-R litter? Yes. Oh, that has too many meanings to do well. Mm. Uh, shaggy. Ooh, shaggy might be a good one to do, just because it's hard to do succinctly. <laughs> right. Uh, I, oh, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the person who's choosing the word. You get to choose the word. <laughs> I shouldn't choose the word because I think it's going to be hard or easy to define. I you choose the word. You jump, just jumped into defining. <laughs> <laughs> the I, one he liked. I have I I like to hear one, and this is an I think this is an easy one, but it's scientific and it's a noun. So uh I think Lynn suggested earlobe from the last mm, yeah. oh earlobe. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not a science definer, so this is gonna be kind of inexact, but uh the earlobe, I have to write it down because mm -hmm. I still have to write everything down. Um, the fleshy part at uh, uh, the fleshy part of the. Okay, sorry. I did when I worked in the office. I would gesture with my hands like this a lot. And one time, okay, well. someone came by and thought I was having a stroke. Um, the fleshy part of. At, at the bottom of the ear, uh, adjacent to the cheek. There we go. That's my answer. All right, good. good. The fleshy part at the bottom of the ear, adjacent to the cheek. Okay, and Steve? All right. All right, here we go. What's right. the word? The word, uh, we went for simple and a noun, earlobe. Oh, earlobe, cool. Um, uh, so, uh, the fleshy appendage that, jeez, oh, earlobe. Um, the part of the ear, would you define it as a part of the body, would that be the genus term? Or you could say a part of the ear, the part of the ear that the, the, the fleshy cartilage that, that composes, I, I don't know the difference between compose and comprise, so I would write this down and then check it afterwards. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the 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 the, fl the the fleshy cartilage that hangs that 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 makes up the lower part of the outer ear. Okay. Did you get that, Heather? All right. Let's let's have Heather read them back to us. All right. And I'll give you the correct answer. <laughs> So we have from Corey, the fleshy part, fleshy. <laughs> the bottom of the ear, adjacent <laughs> to the cheek. Right. And then from Steve, we have the fleshy part that makes up the lower part of the outer ear. So good to use outer ear. Yeah. You can tell I haven't done science defining because I'm just like, ear. Nah. Right, right. But you can also see the similarities that we have. I mean, we both had fleshy, you know, yeah. it's, it's so, yeah. Ear. And again, this is not how words are defined, but. Uh. The, the, so Merriam, Web, no, I'm sorry, uh, Webster's New World Collegiate, Steve's Dictionary will do first. Which again, I was a managing editor oh, on. I, I had it. very <laughs> little to do with the defining. You didn't define every word in here, okay. I, very few. Yeah. Okay. Almost none, frankly. Okay. <laughs> well, no, Houghton, for many years, Houghton has owned both American Heritage and Webster's New World, but Webster's New World mm -hmm. came to us via Wiley with its own editorial staff. And um, the, it, so it, we, I was responsible for, you know, working with that staff to getting it, the fifth edition into publishing, but they were mm -hmm. editorially distinct from us. Right. So we're, we'll go to them anyway. So not Steve okay. and Harry, but a different dictionary, Webster's New World, mm -hmm. uh, fifth uh, edition, collegiate. Um, earlobe, the fleshy lower part of the external ear, often written to words earlobe. 
And yeah. but I love Merriam Webster's. Um, uh, sorry, I lost to ear ache, ear bud, ear flap, Earl Grey, ear. Oh, it's after Earl Grey. Okay. Uh, Earlobe, the pendant part of the ear of humans or some domestic chickens. That's an old <laughs> definition, I'm sure. The pendant part? The pendant, the pendant part. part. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's Steve the Cat. Hey, Steve yes. the Cat. I figured hey. everyone would like to see Steve the Cat in action. Yes, yes. for sure. Does Steve the Cat have uh, earlobes? I don't know. No, he's no. just got... No. No. He, is not a, he is not a domestic chicken. No. Apparently not. All right, do, he should we have buddy. earlobes? This is, this is, I'm astonished. Should we do I'm one more and then we, and then we probably uh, open it up for questions. If you, if you oh, we can go to questions to... now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind one of more, academic. One more. We'll, we'll do a simple, we'll do a fun. We'll do a very one. simple. Okay, I'll we'll take do, my I don't know if it's simple or not. Wait, well, let's, All Corey, right. let's you and I do it together. Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's a great good. idea. That's a great idea. Let's work, let's workshop it together. Okay. All right. Heather, give us one more. Anyone wanted to toss any new suggestions in the group chat? Otherwise, we still have glint and litter. And glint? Boozle. Yes, glint. Moist, Wasn't... Shaggy. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking of the drug in Strangers with Candy that she wipes on her lips. <laughs> what? <laughs> glint. glint. Who doesn't go to Strangers with Candy first? <laughs> oh. Uh. Boost is on the table. Paprika, strident. Discomfort. We could do we could do strident. Strident's a good one. Yeah. I think that some of the other ones just have too much. Like boost has a lot of now or a lot of meanings. Litter has a lot of meanings. Oh, my dog is very excited because I'm talking. You want to do you want to <laughs> do strident, Steve? Uh, do I want to do strident? Do we um, want to do strident? Let's do strident. Sure. Okay. I just want to give a shout out to Jingle Jangle from Riverdale, though. That's that's another great uh, TV drug. Um, in pixie stick form. Okay, Strident uh, is... Strident. Uh, it's an adjective, so um, you might start with an in or an of. Or... Uh -huh. um... It's going to clean up while you do that. Of a... I mean, it's strident is used of voices. Yes. So relating to a voice that is, or I, in, depending on the dictionary, you might just list a string of, 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 yeah, of, of I was adjectives. Yeah, going to say you would just do adjectives like um, loud and screechy, or right, right, yeah. I mean, if you had, you would say um, of a voice if you had any kind of of uh orienting phrase uh yeah loud and i mean would you put in the negative connotation that a strident voice is usually i mean at what point are we talking about the definition and what top point are we talking about the pragmatic usage of it you know how it's often Ooh. used of women in a right. or derogatory fam f f I mean, fashion yeah that would be a usage note right yes yeah so so if we're just doing a definition, you would say uh, loud and unpleasant to listen to. Yeah, strident's always unpleasant, right? Well, it, but it's not, it's not a cacophony unpleasantness. It's more of a, um, uh, uh, it's, um, well, is, is a voice strident unpleasant to listen to because you disagree with the speaker? Or is it, mm -hmm. I mean, is there something about the timbre of the voice right. that it's, is unpleasant? It's different, it's different yeah, we from the shrill. Simple. Yeah, yeah, it's different from shrill. So strident would be um, uh, maybe em emphatic is not quite the right word, but someone who's strident is sort of loud. Boldly loud. Boldly loud. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. And then you would have to have a usage note yeah. that has some kind of, I mean, you couldn't use a formulaic usage note. It would have to be like a little usage paragraph about right. how strident is most often applied 
unfairly to women's voices or is most often used to women's voices, avoid this, uh, yeah. avoid this use. Someone just asked how- How is stride different, different than shrill? Shrill, um, shrill implies high pitch. And, and a, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think shrill implies a high pitch. Like if someone says like shrill whistle, a shrill voice, a shrill scream, that's all loud and high pitched. Strident's not high pitched, just emphatic. So do we have a definition? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? We'll pretend. And, and it is? Uh, what did we say? Loud, boldly loud? Loud and emphatic? Uh, what are we yeah. doing? Yeah, boldly loud and, and it, over, I don't know. Tell us, Mark. Uh, this is not <laughs> how we define words. No, no, no. I, I'm sure. I'm sure we either. I, so I, I, the only Oxford I have, you know, except on my computer, is the Canadian Oxford. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's what we'll go to. Uh, strident, uh, loud and harsh. First okay. definition, and then two, urgent and aggressive. Which I, I don't think he went for the urgent uh, thing. And the example given is uh, strident demands from the mm -hmm. four letter writer. Yeah. That there you go. Sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Really hard to do without citations in front of you. <laughs> I yeah. know, right? Yeah. This is not, we, we definitely put you on the spot and thank you for playing along and All right. agreeing to do that. I hope it was <laughs> more fun than pain. <laughs> Well, I hope for you all it was more fun than pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more to the point. Right. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, I haven't had a chance to look at the questions in the group chat, but Heather maybe can can pull some out, um, or maybe if we can. Well, what we did last week was we asked people to unmute and ask their own questions. But um, well, let's do that. Let me. I'll work backwards. I'll do it. Um, see, people are trying to help with the defining. <laughs> and uh, oh, here we go. Rachel, Rachel, that would be uh, it, Rachel responding to Rachel's last thing. That would be similar to um, Black Adder, that Black Adder <laughs> episode where they accidentally um, throw the dictionary in the fire, and they try to rewrite the dictionary from scratch overnight. Um, <laughs> what was Rachel's question? Something about a, four, a Fahrenheit 451 scenario where we have to re recreate the dictionary from scratch. Uh, <laughs> ouch. Yeah. yeah. Take away his yeah. computers and say it happens. Yeah. No. Uh, Deanna has a, a question. Uh, Deanna, can you unmute and ask about? Mm -hmm. I about would be delighted to. This is nice been background. Brilliant. Both of you. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, thanks. My question is for Corey. Mm -hmm. No offense, Steve. Um, but I've just always been fascinated by color um and so you know i mean it's like both of your upcoming but inject them into my veins um <laughs> are you going all the way back to the wine dark sea or are you starting with the 20th century sort of redefinitions that you're describing the scientific ones and how are you how was that interplay built in there in terms of the cultural differences that come up so shutting up now <laughs> I, I am mentioning, I'm not going all the way back to the Wine Dark Seas, because that would be uh, way more than my publisher wants to actually publish. But I am mentioning, the, I mean, the reality is, is that defining color has been something that's been going on since, probably since pre-antiquity. I mean, we know about it, you know, certainly as far back as Pliny and Seneca and... Um, the thing that's really great about, I mean, I'm talking quite a bit about the cultural, uh, the way that color names and color definitions are seated culturally and how they're also so closely aligned to this ideal that we don't think that color names can change ever, um, but they change all the time. Pink is, pink is my favorite example. Pink used to refer to yellow pink was a yellow color. It was not a light red color. Um, and it didn't become a light, it didn't get applied to light red until about the 1700s, 1800s. Um, wine dark seas is great because, you know, people who are not 
classicists read it and are like, oh, this means that the Greeks had no word for blue, which, you know, Mary Norris is on here and can tell you that's total BS. Um, <laughs> my dog also thinks it's total BS. Ginny, chill out, Topo. Um, so wine dark season is great just because it doesn't, you know, we think of wine dark that has to be a color. And a lot of classicists say actually it might be referring to um, like a tempestuous sea. It might be referring to a sea that is, um, you know, uh, clouded or, so, so I am talking a little bit about it, but the, the bulk of it'll be sort of how do you take these scientific definitions of color, which is supposed to be the subjective thing you can measure in the 20th century and set them against actual usage, which never matches what the scientists say. <laughs> so there's a, uh, we've, we've discussed this before, but there's that great quote um, from Steve Martin's New Yorker article uh, where he plays the lexicographer who's uh, gone off the deep end uh, after being uh, rejected. Uh, and he makes this comment about um, just try defining the word blue without using the word nanometer. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's a science joke. Yep. And yeah. a dictionary joke. And a dictionary yeah. joke. We have a question from Beverly. Uh, would you like to ask in the group? Or we could ask it for you if you're if you're shy type. Is Beverly there? I can unmute. I can unmute. I guess you're going back to the one I asked a long time ago. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wondered if you wanted to take bets on how long it will take for Marie Kondo to make it in as a verb. Make it in. A dictionary oh. as a verb. I keep. I feel like I'm hearing it all time, all the time in the last couple of weeks. Oh. Well, it would have to be turned into a generic verb. So you'd have to say, "I've condoed that," or "I have." I'm condoing my apartment, and then of course you have disambiguation problems with condo. Oh, but people oh, say no. Marie Kondo. People say Marie Kondo to, dis to distinguish it. it. That's what really? I've heard. Really? Oh. Yeah. Trademarks yeah. take a long time to get in, though, because they, <laughs> and names tend to take a long time to get in because they're protected properties. So people okay. tend, so, so like give it 20 years. And if we're still, All right. I, I won't hold my breath. Marie, yeah, right. Yeah. That's a good idea. Don't hold your breath. I'm we'll curious. Die. Oh, what are you, are you looking? I'm, I'm looking at an urban dictionary and seeing, uh, uh, condo used as a verb. Yeah, it's already in Urban Dictionary. So, uh, oh, well then. Certain people are, yeah, I mean, no, it's, I mean, the point is it's being um, categorized and looked at and considered uh, by people right. who, you know, they, I don't use the Urban Dictionary as a resource, but it is mm -hmm. a very useful way of getting the pulse of what people are thinking about right now. Right, mm -hmm. so it, it the, the yeah. fact that it's there means it's crossed other people's minds. So it's more likely to go into than some random word that that isn't there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I used Urban Dictionary. I remember using it to learn the definition of twerk when that suddenly became well known. Mm -hmm. And and I was a little disappointed in my dictionaries that I couldn't go and find what that meant, but of course, well, I could put an urban dictionary and that would tell me. To, to, to give you, and here, I mean, especially before we were driven by media cycles, uh, to give you an example, you know, with twerk, it took a while for us to enter it, not because it wasn't worth entering, but it meant bolstering the vocabulary that we did have. So for one word and example, you can't really talk about twerking unless you talk about bouncing. And we didn't have the, we didn't have the appropriate definition of bounce. So mm -hmm. that required research. So it's not like you can just throw a word in, you know, mm -hmm. if, if this word is worth entering, you've got to look at a whole lexical realm of things and revise or add. So it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there were a couple of questions I'll, I'll try to combine that people were curious about uh, languages other than English. Um, do Have either of you studied other languages? Is that part of the process of defining in English? Um, and is there a language that fascinates you that you're interested in studying? You first, Steve. Um, well, first of all, obviously, I think it, it 
it's much easier to understand any language if you know multiple languages. My knowledge of English has certainly been helped by the other languages that I've studied and learned. Um, my Spanish is pretty good. Uh, my Czech is decent. Some of it is from what I got as a child. Um, in my, I'm, I'm of Czech immigrants ultimately, uh, but I've also studied in school. My German is barely passable. And uh, my West Greenlandic is strictly academic. West Greenlandic? <laughs> I did not know of this. Oh. Yeah, um, in at, at University of Chicago, one of the you had to study at least one year of a non-Indo-European language. That's pretty cool, actually. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, English is my first language. I grew up speaking Finnish with one grandmother and German with the other grandmother. Um, I studied dead languages in college. So I have Latin, I have some Koine Greek. I've mostly forgotten all my Greek. I'm sorry, Mary. Um, I, uh, old English, Middle English, old High German, Gothic. Um, I, lo I love, I uh, love, I, I love the Brythonic and Goidelic languages, so Gaelic, Welsh. <laughs> Sorry, what? shut up, Steve. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I think that's fantastic. So I just the, haven't heard anyone talk about the Brythonic and Goidelic <laughs> languages in a while. So those are uh, the Gaelics, um, Welsh, Cornish, uh, Manx, I guess is a, is Manx a Goidelic or Brythonic? Anyway. I love them, so I'm trying to, to uh, I'm trying to use uh, Duolingo to learn Welsh, which has has I can say I am a dragon. That's about as far as I can get. Um, <laughs> is I that, was and is that I, page one of the Welsh. How it is basically, yeah, it is. Um, and I started learning a little bit of Czech too. I have a good friend who's moving to Prague, so um, so that's been that's been another subject of text between Steve and I, me going, how do you do the R with the circumflex over it? I can't make that sound. Yeah. I can. I know you, yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's easy. I'm like, Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, we're, um, we're at about an hour. So, um, you know, I, I know I could just keep talking, but we should probably wrap it up and let people go on. A few people, once a few people start falling off, we know that we've probably reached our our limit, but uh, it's been terrific. Um, I should mention the, the the podcast name again is Fiat Lex. You want to look that up. Um, I've shown you the books. Was yeah, there anything else I was supposed to mention? Anything else I should have mentioned that uh, that Not I have? Corey, no. Corey's um, book, a new book. She'll come to Bexley when it's out. And yes, yeah. Yeah, so I'll announce here. on Twitter when my next books are going to be published. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank well, you, thank Mark. You. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, thank, thank you, you everyone, for listening. Thank you yeah. very much. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try again. I'm going to, and you don't have to stick around for this, but I'm going to uh, share my screen and run the, uh, if I can find Zoom. It's Zoom, like, you know, Zoom just Zoom. likes to jump around. <laughs> like it's never on the same screen and you do different things and things shift to other locations. So I, I don't know where my Zoom controls are anymore. <laughs> I may not be able to do this. My plan is that I'm going to, oh, I bet I have to, no, that didn't work. Uh, my plan is to show you the splash screens and uh, play the wonderful theme song again. And uh, we'll do this again next week with a new guest. And thank you everybody for coming and thank you all for, I uh, thank our guests for being here and uh, have a great rest of your quarantine day. <laughs> <laughs> all right.